honey, flowers, fruits, veggies, all of these foods and more. So can you guess what they have in common? Well, here's a hint. Many of them wouldn't exist without it. Here's another hint. It starts with the letter B. Okay, so it is a B. And today, on this very special edition of The Balancing Act, we're gonna dive into the hive and we're gonna make you a true believer. Here at the Farmer's Table restaurant in Boca Raton, Florida. Amber is on location and she's very busy. Yes, that's right. Today I am a worker bee and we're about to meet a true queen bee here in North Carolina at the Bayer Bee Care Center. Bayer, like the aspirin? Yes, but this is the crop science division of Bayer. And here, they're into treating a whole lot more than just headaches. In fact, they are on the cutting edge of bee research, and their feed a bee program has planted more than two billion bee-loving wildflowers all across America. And today, we have arrived at the hive. First, I want to test your bee IQ. So how many different types of bees are there? Is it A, 5,000, B, 10,000, or C, 20,000? Here to answer that question is Sarah Myers. She's the education lead here at the Bayer Bee Care Center. Sarah, what's the answer? In fact, there are over 20,000 different bee species in the world, and they're all important pollinators. 20,000 species. Okay, so what species do you study here? Well, let's get suited up and go find out. Oh, awesome. Let's go. So Sarah went to go get suited up. She left me mine. And it's pink. So why is it important to dress like this when we're around the bees? Well, really, bees are naturally only aggressive at their home. And wearing a suit from head to toe really protects you so that you can safely observe them without any fear of stings. But let's go check them out. Okay. But before we get started, let's light our smoker. Okay. This is a great way to protect ourselves from any potential stings and it also just kind of calms the bees. So we're gonna lightly peck Relax. the smoker with some cedar chips. Smells nice, gives the bees that calming effect. If you don't mind, if you could grab some of the cedar chips behind you. Perfect, you're well on your way to become a beekeeper. So now, Sarah, this is one of seven hives that you guys have here. Yes, it is. And they're all used for research. And this one in particular, we like to use for demonstrations a lot. We're gonna smoke the front entrance, which is over here. This is where the bees are coming and going. So I'm gonna invite you to stand right behind here. Sure. Take off my safety strap here. Open up and visit with the girls. Okay, so far not so bad. I was yeah. expecting a giant swarm to come out like the movies. Exactly, they're, they're really very docile. I'm gonna take this off here. Oh, there they are. Oh yeah. So you see just a few bees visiting. So these are all worker bees that you're seeing. Predominantly in the hive, 40 to 60,000 of the bees, 90% are gonna be your worker bees, I would say. All wow. female, doing lots of important work. That's right, ladies. We do all the good, important work exactly. here. Exactly. So now this is the inside structure. Hi, bees. Okay, wow, this is the most bees I've ever been around. All right. So. There are 10 of these frames, and we're gonna start from one side to the other, okay. and hopefully we'll find the queen. Okay. I'm gonna need your help, because she's got a yellow dot on her back. And I'll just show you, this is exactly what the honeycomb looks like from the very beginning. Wow. So think of it kind of as a wall to your house, okay. just a starter structure. They haven't started building any wax yet. So when we are harvesting the honey, mm -hmm. How do we know that we're leaving enough for the bees? Well, that's an important question. It's important to make sure you're not taking too much honey and that the hive has enough through winter, which on average, depending on where you're at in the country, at least 50 pounds is recommended. I think it's great to show the people at home, here we are with tons of bees and they're pretty much letting us go about our business as well. Most of the time, if you respect them, give them some space, they generally aren't too concerned. Oh my goodness. Okay. So a lot more bees here. Wow. As you notice, again, still predominantly female workers. And look at all, is this the honey inside? This is honey, yep. A lot, any of that shiny area is the honey. I will point out, there's a few males. Do you see these kind of fatter ones right here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you see how different they are. So those are the drones. 
And so their sole purpose is just to um, to reproduce with the queen? Yes, okay. exactly. That's all they do. And they're very purposeful. So only spring and summer when mating season occurs do we actually see drones in the colony. Now, would you like to hold this just to take a look? Ah, okay. Do I hold this tool? Do I put so the tool down? So you can put your tool in your pocket okay. or on the side of the hive there. And then you're going to want to just hold right at the top. Okay. Perfect. Let's not squeeze any bees. Wonderful. Got it? Wow. Okay, and just take a look at what you're seeing there. Again, a lot of nectar. You might see some bees bringing in pollen. This is heavy too. It is. You know, when it's full of honey, that could weigh up to 10 pounds. Just oh my that goodness. One frame. Oh, everybody just busy at work, happy as can be. Well, let's see if we can find the queen. I don't see the queen, queen yet. Yep, okay. she's not on here. I think she's hiding a little further back. You know, so much of the hive life revolves around the queen, but it's actually the hive that determines who the queen's going to be because when she's a larvae, they give her more bee pollen. They give her royal jelly. Royal jelly. It's a high protein diet. She gets that exclusive diet and it allows her to grow and develop into a queen in just a short very period of time. I need your detective eye because I think I spot the queen. Okay. Do see. you see a bee with a yellow dot on oh, the I back? Oh, I do. I do. We see her. Perfect. So let's take a look. You see the queen, her body is much longer than the rest of the bees. Wow. And this is because as the only fertile female, she has to be physically big enough to store all the eggs that she'll need for her lifetime, which is typically one to three years. So she could have a million or more offspring in that time frame. But queens laying 1,000 to 1,500 or even 2,000 eggs a day. So that means we could have the same amount of bees emerging as adults. That's one busy queen, huh? She's very busy. And right now she's walking around looking at all these cells to find an empty place to lay an egg. My goodness. And when she lays an egg, she sticks her tail in into the cell like she's sitting in a chair and she deposits that egg through her stinger. Wow. And she'll do this a thousand or more times every single day. That's one busy woman. I feel like we should salute her or something, yeah. right? <laughs> That was such an incredible experience, thank you. I never, ever thought I'd do that. Is this something you always knew you wanted to do? Well, not early on as a child. I accidentally fell into an entomology class while in college, and now 11 years later, I can say that I'm inherently fascinated by these amazing insects. I mean, they truly are a miracle. And speaking of miracles, you're about to have a baby yourself. What do you hope the future generation learns from all the research you're doing here at the Bayer Bee Care Center? Sure, I really hope that the future takes away the importance that bees and other pollinators play not only in the beautification of our environment but also our food supply. It's so critical to uh, moving forward with new generations and preserving those insects. And what would happen if the bee population were to die out? But luckily we have 20,000 bee species who are all working as active pollinators and then we have other pollinating organisms like our butterflies, our birds, even bats are important pollinators. So collectively they're all doing a lot of work and then looking at research and improving bee health will ensure they'll be here for many years to come. All right, well Sarah, you've made me a true believer. It's wonderful. And if you want to know more information while you're sitting there at home, you can always go to our website, thebalancingact.com and find out what all this buzz is about. And coming up, Olga dishes it out with the help from some honeybees. Stay tuned to see what that buzz is all about. Welcome back, everyone. I'm at the Farmer's Table Restaurant in Boca Raton, Florida. My sidekick is busy on location, but also busy with me this morning is Chef Chi. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, actually. I love this concept of clean eating. Everything is fresh and great. Talk to me about that. Well, here at Farmer's Table, we are at the forefront of health and wellness. This is you know, a really big thing, a part of the restaurant. We try to source out locally as much as possible. Which is fantastic because it's from the farm to the table. And look what you have for me this morning. I love to eat, so take it away. Tell me what this is. Uh, right here we have a warm quinoa salad with a grilled airline breast. Can and I try it? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. Um, it's also with a watermelon salad and watercress. And we brush a little bit of honey over the top just to give it that nice uh, sweet glaze. Mm -hmm. but, a couple of other dishes we have is the coleslaw that we dress with honey vinaigrette, mm -hmm. the baked sweet potatoes uh, brushed with honey, and then the same vinaigrette we also use on our signature cob salad. So you use honey instead of, let's say, sugar? Yes, we try to use raw honey. 
and we try to keep it as raw as possible because you get all the health benefits from it. And you could taste the difference. Yeah, it's richer, it's got a nicer body to it. And the customers know they're getting great stuff? All the time. And what is this? That is actually our wildflower honey vinaigrette that we mm -hmm. use on a couple of our dishes. Yeah, I'm going to pour some in. Know that the bees were busy for me this morning. But you and I are going to try together. Thank you so much for your time. This was great. I'm going to bring my girls here. Come on back. Ready to test your BQ again? Which of these is a serious threat to honeybee populations? Is it A, loss of habitat, B, improper pesticide use, C, the varroa mite, or D, all of the above? Amber's with someone who can give us the answer. I'm here with Becky Langer. She's the project manager of North American Bee Health, which I think is one of the coolest jobs. You're going to find out why in a minute. So if anybody knows the answer to this, it's going to be Becky. Amber, unfortunately, it's D. Those are all factors affecting honeybee health today. And that's why at the Bear Bee Care Program, we have the center where we can educate on research, education, stewardship, and partnerships so that we make sure that honeybees thrive today and tomorrow. I mean, this is so cool. Becky, can you take us through this place? Sure. This is the first stop where we bring visitors so they can learn the various facts about the hive. One of their, the things they're most excited to learn is that the average worker bee in the summertime lives only four to six weeks. That's incredible. And what about people who think, you know, who might be afraid of bees? Generally, if they're out foraging, getting their food, they're going to be very docile. They don't want to sting. If they sting you, they're going to die because they can only sting once. So they really only sting as a defense mechanism. Okay, what do we have over here? At this station, we educate people on bee health. Let's talk about some of the factors that affect bee health. The key factors are forage and nutrition, improper pesticide use, and the varroa mite. The varroa mite is number one enemy to bees. It is a giant tick-like bug that attaches to the bees and injects viruses and bacteria, making the bee populations very sick. Now, speaking of giant bugs, Okay, so this is actually the varroa mite, and if you were a bee, this is how big it would seem to you. That is, that's the size of parasite you would be packing on your back, and you may get more than one of those. You may have three, four on you. Here at the Bayer Bee Care Center, you're focusing on how to help farmers prevent the spread of varroa mites. Bayer, for more than 30 years, has been working to develop those miticides, helping beekeepers keep the hives healthy. So I see that you have a really cool looking laboratory over here. Let's go. What kind of work are you doing in here? There's approximately 20,000 bee species, 4,000 in North America. We can't work on all 20,000 because they're not all here, but we want to be interested in what is visiting the garden. We also work on parasites and diseases that are affecting bee populations. We talked about the varroa mite being number one, but nosema is also an important pathogen, and that's what this scientist is looking at. We monitor the disease state and help develop tools those beekeepers can use to keep the hives healthy in the future. What about people at home? Are there things that, you know, the rest of us can be doing to help our bee population? There is, let's go talk about Feed a Bee. Mm -hmm. So Feed a Bee is a major initiative for you guys. You've planted over two billion wildflowers. Why is it important? So we have to make sure we're taking care of those bees because a well-fed bee means well-fed humans. Bees are pollinating many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we rely on for our healthy diets every day. So what can people do to get involved in the Feed a Bee? Sure, Feed a Bee is a major call to action, educating people to plant flowers. They like anything that flowers and blooms. It could be herbs, vegetables, fruit trees. That's all gonna provide a source of food. And for the larger organizations, we have a Feed a Bee grant initiative where we will award uh, up to $5,000 for groups to plant their own forage and habitat in a community effort. Okay, and I see we've got some Feed a Bee pollinator packets right here. Now, I can't leave this tour without doing one honey taste test. Tell me you have that here. Let's go taste the honey, Amber. I had no idea that there were so many different kinds of honey. There are. Honeys will take on a different look, consistency, and taste depending on what the bees are fed on. So why don't you try it and tell me which is your favorite? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And look, the color on these is so different. Mmm. You can really taste the orange in there. Mm -hmm. Which wow. is your favorite? That buckwheat, it, it's delicious. It almost reminds me of like pancakes. Uh, you'll hear people put it on pancakes. Oh, yes. it's so good. This tour has been amazing. This place is amazing. What else can people do to make sure that our bees are buzzing around mm -hmm. forever? It's important to become educated. Go to feedabee.com for more information, or if you happen to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, you can come visit us at the Bee Care Center. Becky, thank you so much for this tour. Thank you, Amber, it was a pleasure. And coming up, Olga is going to show us why we're sweet on honeybees. Stay with us. Welcome back.
back, everyone. Did you know that the ancient Egyptians used honey as a treatment for wounds, as a gift to the gods, and even to make beer and wine? Hmm. You already know honey makes a great sweetener, but when it comes to minding our own beeswax, beeswax is used to make candles, lip balm, and soap. And that's only a few of the reasons why we are totally sweet on honeybees. Here's another BQ brain teaser. How many flowers does a honeybee need to visit to make a one pound jar of honey? Is it A, 2,000, B, 20,000, C, 200,000, or D, 2 million? Amber knows someone who can give us the info. I sure do, Olga. We're back at the Bayer Bee Care Center, and today is such a special day. It's the 10,000th visitor and three-year anniversary celebration of the center. Here to get that party started off is Jeff Donald. And before we begin, Jeff, do you have an answer to that quiz question? Well, believe it or not, Amber, bees will have to visit up to two million flowers to make one jar of honey. So be sure and keep that in mind when you're just eating it from the jar with a spoon. I do want to talk a little bit about how bees and other pollinators are so crucial to food production and the foods that we eat every day. Absolutely. They're some of the hardest working ladies in agriculture and, and without them we wouldn't have the delicious and nutritious fruits and vegetables that we all enjoy. So what else can we do to help them thrive when we're at home? That's the beauty of it. We can all play a role whether or not we have a big yard and can plant lots of wildflowers or if you just have a balcony and can plant uh, one pot of flowers, it's all going to help feed a bee. You know, Bayer is doing some really important work here, not only helping to preserve but to nurture the bees. Talk about what's in the future for the Feed a Bee program. So this year we're trying to do pollinator plantings in all 50 states. Uh, so if folks out there listening want to play a role, they can go to feedabee.com and apply for a grant to plant their own pollinator patch. And you're not working on this alone, are you? No, you could never do a project like this uh, by yourself. We have great partners all over the country, more than 120 of them. One of our newest partners, the Sweet Virginia Foundation, is here to help us celebrate with these kids today. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Amber. Today we're going to learn about bees and go on a tour. We'll have a scavenger hunt. You'll actually get to see bees. Few of you might even hold bees if you'd like. Yeah. So in the world, there are 20,000 different bees. And only one of those are honeybees. Is there anything that you learned here today that you didn't know? Um, I didn't know that the Veronites, if they were on a human, they would be that big. Important to help the bees because uh, they have a, they pollinate all of our food, and if we didn't have bees, then we wouldn't be able to have all the food that we have today. I'm here with Dan Price of the Sweet Virginia Foundation. Now, Dan, tell us about your foundation. Our mission is to create a healthier and happier planet by teaching young children about honeybees and growing and cutting lots of sunflowers. But we get them to begin to connect the dots and see that this world is a connected symphony. So we are providing the one-stop place for educators around the world to go when they want to share a lesson about honeybees with their students. You guys also have a bee sanctuary of your own? Right, so we operate about a 15-acre honeybee sanctuary on the outskirts of Washington, D.C. We thought we need a lot of flowers, so we went with sunflowers, thinking that's the happiest flower there is, that fits with our mission, and we grow tens of thousands of sunflowers. They're so beautiful. Beautiful. We thought, you know, these can make people happy. And we take them out to rehab centers and hospitals and nursing homes. And I will tell you, they, they make a lot of people happy. Um, so this year, I am happy to report that Bayer has generously given us a grant to buy thousands of vases in which to hold all these flowers uh, when they go out to these facilities. It's very nice. So thank you so much, Dan, for all the work it's that you're really doing. We really appreciate pleasure. it. All right, so I'm getting busy and Olga's getting buzzed. I gotta see this. Welcome back. I'm at the farmer's table where they've made me this fabulous honey flavored cocktail. It's called Spa Day. Olga, are you buzzed? <laughs> no, but I'm working on it. But remember, this is all for a great cause to remind people out there that none of this would exist without our friends, the honeybees. And also to remind people how the Bear Bee Care Program is making history with their Feed a Bee Program. So while the bees are feeding us, it's time for us to return the favor by planting food for them. Oh, I will. So be part of the solution. Be part of history. 
and of course, be, be the, the change. change. And for more information on any of this, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Hey, Olga, save some of that for me. I will. Salute. So, you want to give it a try? Sure. Do our bee dances. Like wagon. All right. Feels like a lot of fun. Yeah. So why are they doing this?